send you for a little time, a child of mine, he said, for you to love the while she lives and mourn for while she's dead. She may be six or seven, or maybe two or three, but will you till I call her back, take care of her for me? She'll bring her charms to gladden you, and should her stay be brief, you'll have her lovely memories, a solace for your grief. I cannot promise she will stay, since all from every turn, but there are lessons taught down there I want this child to learn. I'm Kieran Bimson, and that was the poem that I read at my daughter Francesca's funeral, and this is her story. The Francesca Bimson Story, on Radio City 96.7 and City Talk 105.9. The 1st of December 2008, um, I'd returned from work, and I was looking forward to Christmas as we all were, and the kids were really excited about looking forward to the, you know, the, the presents, what they were going to receive and planning to have, you know, a fantastic time, a, the, the loveliest time of the year, Christmas. Namely, Francesca, um, really excited because it was her first Christmas that she was aware of, so she was, like, more animated than all them put together because you're like, oh, can we get the Christmas tree, Christmas tree decorations? And so we decided to have a walk over to the local as the supermarket. Um, obviously, they sell everything as the so we were aware that they'd sell nice Christmas trees. I'm Kieran Bimson. I'm 15 years old, and I'm Francesca Bimson's brother. We picked a black Christmas tree off the shelf in the Asda because we've never had a black Christmas tree before, so Francesca was made up. She was playing with all the things in the shop. She was three years of age now, so she was aware that Christmas was happening, and I was telling her about Father Christmas, and she could understand. We took it back to the house and then we were decorating it and we put the baubles on and the, the lights turned it on and Francesca was dancing and things like that and we were made up. My dad asked me to take Francesca upstairs so I remember holding her and walking up the stairs and as I got into her room I put a DVD on for them, my favourite film. She watched that and as she fell asleep I took the DVD out of Christina's DVD player and put it on in my room and just watched it. And as I was dozing off, I turned the telly off and the, the DVD player off. As we always do, go through the routine, probably like most of Liverpool, checking all your sockets are turned off, your plugs, your curtains are closed over, all your electricity is turned off, you check your snips on the back of the door, turn the keys, make sure the windows are locked, and proceeded to make our way up the stairs, um, which wasn't unusual, you know, go to bed. But what was unusual was the kids still had the DVD playing in the background. So I shouted in, turn that telly off now, you've got school tomorrow to the kids. And at that stage, then I climbed in bed and Elna got in bed and the baby, I think at that stage, was asleep in the cot. Our Anne-Marie fell asleep, must have fell asleep, because the next thing I remember, the most thickest, black, suffocating smoke you've ever ever felt in your throat the blackest feeling of suffocation and I was panicking because it opened my eyes what's going on, what's going on I don't know whether the smoke had been irritating my throat or something while I was asleep but I, I just woke up Elna, Elna I think the house is on fire and Elna woke up hysterical what's happening, what's happening we were both totally disorientated when I woke when he shouts, you know, the, the house is on fire. From the him shouting that and me waking up, it went from that to the smell of smoke and then a black heat. This hell, I can ex only explain it as a, as a hell coming towards you, black, hot, thick black smoke. And it was scorching. And there's no way anyone could get through. No one could survive it. Give or take a few more seconds, I'd say, but they've all been dead, all of us. I was just awoken by my dad. Just, he was screaming. I just woke up in a panic and I could feel the black smoke. And as I was breathing it in, it gradually was beginning to get worse. I, I was like coughing up black saliva. It was so, the smoke was so thick and 